In Chapter 7, I'll be covering binomial distributions. In essence, using the binom.dist function, you can calculate probabilities for a binomial experiment. In order to conduct a binomial distribution, certain criteria have to be met, including each trial must have two outcomes, either success or failure. The probability of a success is the same for each trial. The sample data is random and independent, meaning that the outcome of one trial has no bearing on the outcome of, of another trial. And the following notation is used when conducting binomial distribution experiments. Please pause the video to read over. So going back to the random assumption, here's a neat trick in Excel to randomize sample data. So I have the results of a survey here and I need to randomize it to pull out 10 samples to test. To do that, under the random column, type equals, equals rand. And then press enter to get a random number. Fill the column with that function. And then sort largest to smallest. And this will also filter the other two columns, randomizing the survey results so you can now pick a sample that you know is random and hopefully independent. Moving on, I'll go over two examples of binomial distributions. In this first example, we want to see what the probability is of getting exactly two fours and of getting two fours or less when a die is tossed seven times. Number of trials is seven. And for each trial, the success is one six or .167. You then list out the successes in the X column, which is 0 through 7. 0 meaning that out of all 7 tosses, you get no 4s. And 1 meaning that you get 1 4, etc. So calculate the binomial distribution. You need to use the binom dist function. So I'm going to type equals binom. Select binom.dist. So number of S, or number S, is the number of successes, or zero. The trials is the number of independent trials, which is seven. The probability of S is the probability of a success, which is 0.167. And cumulative is either going to be true or false, and I'll explain the difference in a second. So number S is zero. Trials, 7, you want to make that absolute, and the probability of success, again you want to make that absolute, and I'm going to set this to false, and so you can see the probability of getting exactly two fours is 23.49%. Now to answer the second half of the problem, the probability of getting two fours or less, you use the same formula except you change the cumulative with the last argument to true. So equals binom dot dist at zero number of trials, you want to make that absolute again. Point one six seven absolute. You set that to true. And so by setting it to that to true, what it does is adds up all the individual probabilities. So the probability of 1 is the probability of 0 plus 1. The probability of 3 is the probability of 0, 1, 2, or 3. And so to answer this question, the probability of getting exactly two fours or less, the probability is 90.38, or these three probabilities added together. 
All right, so in this second example, a coin is tossed 50 times. We want to know the probability of getting exactly 20 heads. As in the last example, use the binom.dis function and set the cumulative argument to false. Number of trials, make that absolute. Probability of S is 50%. Cumulative is false. Alright, so the probability of getting exactly 20 heads is 4.19%. And I'll show you one last thing. I'm going to show you how to graph this. So you go to Insert, Column, 2D Column. Let me go ahead and move this up to the top. Delete that out. And we need to change the horizontal axis because it's starting at 1 instead of 0. So to do that, right click within the chart, select data, click edit under horizontal axis, and change the axis range and click OK. Make this bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. And so now when you hover over 20, you can see that the value is 4.19 and you can see the value here for 19 is 2.7 19 is 2.7 alright thanks for watching